Ito ang Vivo Y36 and tingnan natin ang pros and cons niya if it is indeed worth 12,999 pesos. Punta muna tayo sa camera which is one of the pros of the phone. Dinala namin siya sa Toycon last week and based sa shots na nakuha namin as we will be flashing here on the screen, maganda naman yung mga nakuha namin shots. Very vibrant siya, kitang-kita yung mga colors. The only thing na hindi ko masyado nagustuhan, there are times na medyo mukha siyang oversaturated. Pero if you're a fan of punchy colors, I think magugustuhan mo yung phone na to. Ang maganda din about this phone is maganda din yung pag-record niya ng videos. Nagustuhan ko din yung pag-record niya ng audio. Subukan natin. So, nandito tayo sa studio mo yun. Ginugulo ko sila para mag-shoot. Para maninig yung audio sa Y36 ni Vivo. Maganda ba? Maganda yung audio. Promise. Promise. So, paano kung hindi nalang magustuhan? I'm sorry, guys. Sa akin kasi po. Sa akin po mas eh. The selfie camera is also not bad. It has 16 megapixel and sobrang linaw. Nakakaganda siya. Gusto yun yung gusto ko sa kanya. So aside dun sa ating main shooter which is at 50 megapixels and then we have a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Wala siya masyadong shot variety since wala kang ultra wide. Kung fan kayo ng Gen Z selfies, hindi niya siya magagawa sa phone na to. So kung okay na sa inyo yung shot variety of having a main shooter and also the selfie camera with your 10 times zoom, then okay na yung camera na to for you. Sunod naman natin na pag-uusapan is yung gaming kasi alam ko marami na naman magko-comment kung pwede ba siyang pang gaming phone. Uunahan ko na kayo na yung processor niya is a Snapdragon 680 processor. Okay naman siya for games pero mag-a-adjust ka nga lang ng settings. We tried it for Genshin Impact. Kaya niya yung Genshin Impact pero kailangan niya siya ilagay sa low graphic settings. And medyo nahirapan siya kapag mas demanding yung mga games kagaya ng Hongkai Star Rail. Ang maganda about this phone, however, is that meron siyang 240 TSR, so mas responsive siya pag naglalaro ka. So yung games natin kagaya ng Call of Duty and Mobile Legends, mananalo ka. One more miss sa phone na to, however, is isa lang yung speaker natin. So kung fan kayo ng stereo speakers, you won't have that same immersive gaming experience kapag ito yung ginamit yung phone. Of course, the same goes sa panonood nyo ng videos on YouTube, Netflix, or Disney+. Plus. Dahil isa lang yung speaker natin, hindi natin may enjoy yung panonood natin ng BTS sa concert nila ng Permission to Dance. Pero meron ka namang earphone jack, so pwede mong gamitin yung favorite pair of earphones mo sa pakikinig mo ng videos mo on highest volume para dinig na dinig mo yung pag-rap ni Suga. So meron tayong Full HD Plus IPS display na perfect sa panonood nyo ng videos kasi sobrang punchy ng colors natin. Pinakaw gusto ko dito habang nanonood tayo ng K-pop music videos, kitang-kita yung mga colors at yung mga crystals. Gusto ko yung pagkitang-kita ko yung mga accessories nila habang sumasayo at kumakanta sila. So, yun yung gusto ko about this phone. However, kung i-compare natin siya sa Y35, yung predecessor o yung nauna na phone dito, mas malinaw yun. Pero, maganda pa rin naman yung colors ng phone na to. Isa pang nagustuhan ko sa phone na to is yung back panel niya which is fingerprint resistant. Kahit tap-tap po siya, hindi kakapit yung fingerprint mo dito. And maganda actually yung color niya. It has an icy blue color na medyo marami siyang glitters. Nihilig ako pag maraming glitters. So kung gusto nyo yung color na ganon, it's not as kikay as I described it. So okay lang to dun sa boys. Huwag kayo mag-freak out. Pero yung biggest winner about this phone, I would have to say, hands down, is yung battery niya. Since dinala namin siya sa Toycon last weekend, we never charged the phone yet. And right now, it is at 65%. So, kayang tumagal yung battery life niya as long as how many days na ba yun? Four days without charging. And buhay na buhay pa rin yung phone natin. I could even still play games with this phone. Meron siyang 5,000 mAh battery and 44 watts charging. So, ibig sabihin, hindi lang pang matagalan yung buhay niya, pero mabilis mo din siyang macha-charge. So, if you're more of a camera person, this might be a good fit for you. Based on experience namin, maganda naman yung kuha namin ng uh, photos with this phone. Although there are times na medyo oversaturated siya, pero the colors are vibrant and punchy. So kung fan kayo nun, then pasado yung phone na to. Although wala nga lang siyang ultra-wide, meron ka namang 10 times zoom. And okay din yung pag-record yun ng videos with good audio quality as well. So kaya nang na-mention ko earlier, it has a Snapdragon 680 processor na medyo mahihirapan pagdating ng mga graphic-heavy games. Pero kung pamatay traffic lang naman and you will be playing lighter games, kayang-kaya naman ng phone na to. Also given na matagal nga yung battery life niya, which is also a plus for this phone. So that's it for me today. This has been Ruth of Unbox PH. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, leave a comment down below kung pasado ba yung phone na to para sa inyo.